Hey everybody, it's time for our Monday market update for Monday, March 1st, 2021. And we're joined by a very special guest. So stick around, we'll be right back. Hey everybody, it's Brad Cox from the Vesta Group of Lawn and Foster. Thanks for tuning in for the Monday market update. We're joined today by Michael Becker, who is the sales manager at Sierra Pacific Mortgage and also Bankrate.com contributor. Michael, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Brad, I appreciate it. Glad to have you here. So I wanna talk a little bit, just briefly, about what's been going on in the market, and then I wanna to talk to Michael about what's been going on with our mortgage rates, because- Yeah, it's been a pretty uh, hectic couple of weeks. It sure has. All right, so let's talk about inventory, because that's our biggest challenge right now. So in the Baltimore metro area, we're seeing about a 0.8 month supply of inventory. And when we talk about that housing inventory, as a reminder, six months is considered a balanced market. Five year average, we've been hovering somewhere around three to three and a half months of supply. And we are now at 0.8 months of supply in Baltimore Metro. Less than a month. Less than a month. And only Baltimore City has slightly more than a month, about a month Makes and a half, sure. every other market has been hovering at about a half month supply, two weeks worth of inventory. So significant seller's market. No wonder there's so much competition out there. Quite a bit of competition. Michael. Yes, sir. We've had a pretty wild ride in the uh, mortgage industry in the past week. We yes. saw those rates that were hovering at, in the upper twos typically for about uh, quite a while. And then last week we saw rates go back up over 3% for the first time in a long time. It's been a long time. I think you have to go back to last um, summer before they uh, broke below 3%. They stay there all throughout the fall and most of the winter. So what's been going on? All right, well, you have to go back a little bit and think about the start of rising rates. So, uh, and actually the history of rates, why they dropped all time lows. Obviously COVID had a big part to play in that. Uh, the economic damage from the shutdowns and businesses not being able to open or do business, people being laid off, drove interest rates down. Economy is going to slow. You have a Federal Reserve stepping in, offering to help in any way they can. They first cut rates to zero on short-term rates. Right. And then they also supported long-term rates, which are like mortgage rates, by buying both mortgage-backed securities and U.S. Treasuries. Um, so that supported it. As the uh, deaths rose, hospitalization rose, COVID got worse, we saw rates getting a little little better over time. Now, on the other end, as things are improving, we started seeing rates rise a little bit. And that was first. So how does that impact? I mean, when you see those those conditions improving, why, why does that make a rate go up? Well, because the idea is that the economy is going to expand or get better. When the economy is getting better, more jobs are being created. You don't need the low rates to stimulate economic activity. And if rates are left too low for too long, the concern about inflation rises. And that's what's kind of the conversation has been the kind of this last few weeks is about inflation expectations really, really expanding. Sure. So when did the rates really, when did the rise really start? Well, the uh, canary in the coal mine was a 10 year treasury, which a lot of people look at as a benchmark for mortgage rates. And that started rising in late summer. And I think that started rising based on uh, hopeful news about vaccines coming out. And people be and and eventually being able to get a handle on this COVID pandemic, um, even though the ten-year Treasury rose throughout the whole fall and into the early winter, mortgage rates actually improved, and which is unusual, right? Is, I mean, there's usually a strong correlation yeah, between the two of those. You're exactly right. It, normally, people always look at the ten-year Treasury to get an idea where mortgage rates are going. Uh, it was it was odd to see mortgage rates improve with the ten-year Treasury rising. A big part of that was that lenders had large margins built into their pricing when COVID first struck. Um, as a they, hedge. As a hedge, exactly. They weren't sure how many loans were going to default, how many forbearance loans they were going to have to cover, what the costs were going to be for um, uh, covering all these costs of forbearance. Because if you're a lender and you're servicing your loans, people not making mortgage payments, you still have to advance that mortgage payment to the bond investor. So it was going to cost a lot, so they were building in large margins. As things looked to be improving, those margins got tighter and tighter. Now they're super tight. Um, and that's why we saw rates improving. Uh, to the all-time lows, what, January and early February, we saw all-time lows. Everything in conventional loans was in the high twos, and you had government loans in the um, in the low to mid twos. I even saw 15-year notes 
that had a one handle on them. Wow, which is just absolutely You might crazy. have to pay a little, a little bit of points to get something at one point something, but sure, uh, that's insane. And a mortgage rate won something? Yeah, so. yeah. Well, so you mentioned January, yeah. and there was a pretty significant event in January as well. You want to talk about what happened then? So uh, January 6th was the Georgia's runoff elections for the Senate, two <laughs> Senate positions. Uh, up until that point, it looked like the Senate was going to hold Republican. Democrats won both of those races. That gives the Democrats the House, the Senate, and the presidency. And that meant that they were going to be able to push through a stimulus large stimulus. Bill. In fact, sure. yesterday, just yesterday, the House pr uh, voted on and passed a $1.9 trillion stimulus. Well, why does that affect interest rates, a lot of people might ask. Right? Sure, yeah. Well, two things. Uh, the economic activity that's going to be created by that stimulus may increase inflation down the road. Again, it's inflation expectations that are pushing buying yields up, not necessarily inflation. There's the idea that inflation is going to come down the road, and it may, given all the stimulus. And then you have the other aspect, which is the debt that has to be sold, the Treasury bonds, to fund the stimulus and deficit spending, and that's adding supply out there in the bond market. So interest rates have to rise a little bit for those bonds to clear. Sure. So that brings us up to about, I guess, about a week and a half ago when we saw this big bond market sell off. So what happened then? That's where th things about a week, week and a half ago kind of turned ugly in the mortgage-backed security market. Um, the bond sell off accelerated about a week and a half ago mostly because these fears of inflation were starting to increase. And the sell-off, once it starts, tends to snowball. And this sell-off kind of snowballed because the investors in those lower interest rate bonds didn't want to be holding them for too long. The idea is that people who have those low rates are likely not going to refinance and may not even sell their house because they have a low rate. Right. So that duration of that bond or holding it gets extended out and... They don't want to hold it. So we had everybody rushing to the door to sell. It's kind of like a stock market crash. We had one day this week where prices, uh, reprices, two reprices um, were 0.625 points worse in the afternoon than they were in the morning. And one day, that means on a $200,000 loan, the same rate cost you $1,250 more in the afternoon than it did in the morning. That's how fast That's sometimes, a significant change. Right? Sure. sometimes the market can move pretty quickly. And um, when those sell-offs happen, they're frightening and they can be bothersome. But it's not all bad news. Okay, so, so where does that put us now? Yeah, the reason I said it's not all bad news is that we're at rates in the low threes on conventional loans. Government loans are still in the high twos. You 15-year notes, you can get something in the mid twos. For heaven's sakes. So so that, that puts us back to where we were maybe what May or so of, of last year, right? Yeah, May of last year and the all time lows prior to COVID, uh, or the rates dropping because of COVID. Sure. So, sure. Um they're still incredibly low historically speaking. Uh, if you want to look at it in the standpoint of a monthly payment, let's say rates rose a half a percent. And it depends. Some rates didn't rise a half percent, some did. It depends on your individual situation. But on a three hundred thousand dollar loan, if your rate rose a half a percent, you might be looking at eighty dollars a month increase in your monthly payment. Right. So not not the end of the world. It shouldn't be a deal breaker for somebody who's qualified for a mortgage, but it's something they should know about going into it. Like if you've been pre approved, um, at this point, at a lower rate, you should make sure you know, have an idea of what your new monthly payment is going to be. Okay, so Michael, it's it's probably not fair, mm -hmm. but I'm going to ask you to break out your crystal ball. Okay. Right? Um, you look at where, what all of the economists were predicting, right? Mm -hmm. Most of them, Lawrence Yun at National Association of Realtors, the Mortgage Bankers Association, everybody, they were saying maybe we'd hit low threes by Q1 of 2022. That's accelerated quite a bit. So where do you think we're headed for the rest of the year? Um, you know, I am required to pull out my crystal ball on a weekly basis, but I only have to look one week in advance. The rate trend index <laughs> that I do at bankrate.com is a one week into the future. So the law further out, it's kind of tough. Obviously, the economists that you mentioned are going to probably increase their year-end or, or Q1 2022 forecast because of that. We're certainly in an inter high rising interest rate environment. However, I do think there's a limit to how much interest rates can rise. Right. The economy is definitely improving. There's no doubt about that. Vaccines are happening. Maybe the pandemic, I don't know if it's waning or not, but it's certainly not as bad as it was in the past. So there's optimism for that. However, the economic damage is... There, how many people have lost jobs? The unemployment rate is 6.3%. Of 
according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. However, even Janet Yellen, or now our Treasury Secretary, right. said that was a low estimate. She said if you added in the people who are working part-time for economic reasons, meaning they can't get full-time jobs. Or those who stopped looking altogether. It would probably be closer to 10%. That's no. a pretty high unemployment rate. So it's going to take a while for the economy to get back to full strength. And it's not until then that you'll see interest rates get back to normal levels or higher levels of 4 or 5%. Um, I'd hate to give a prediction on year end, but I see them. And hopefully this sell-off will, will pause here and we'll see a steady rise in interest rates. Or maybe even a pause here for a little bit because it is a, it was a pretty rapid increase over the last couple of days. I can't see us getting out of the threes in 2021. I think we'll be in the threes throughout the entire year. Which keeps us still at historically fairly low rates. Well, you know what? Interest rate cycles go up and down all the time. And a lot of people who are buying houses at uh, higher rates are concerned about it. I remember at the end of 2018, uh, the 30-year fixed rate on average got right at 5% just above. Right. It was panic in the market. People were acting like it was the worst thing ever, and those his rates are still historically good. But one thing to remember is if you are buying a house uh, and rates are a little bit higher than they've been in the past, then interest rate cycles go up and down. Yeah. A year or two after you buy the house, if that interest rate cycle comes down, there's always the opportunity to refinance and lower rate. Everybody who bought, uh, I did loans for in 2017, 2018, and 2019, Oh, everybody refinanced. Refinanced yeah. this year. So sure. uh, that will probably happen in the future. If you have plans to move, you shouldn't, a three and a quarter, three and a half, 3.75, 30-year fixed interest rate shouldn't deter you from doing that. Agreed. Okay. Well, Michael, thank you for all the information. Super valuable. Uh, we really appreciate that. Uh, wanted to just remind everybody, if you have any questions about uh, the, the real estate market, you can contact me, Brad Cox, the Vesta Group of Long and Foster at 410-881-3122 or email me at brad at homesbyvesta.com. And Michael, how could people reach you if they have any questions about the mortgage rate market or, or mortgages in general? Best way is via my cell phone, 443-310-0012 or they can email me anytime. It's my name, Michael Becker at spmc.com. Thanks again, Michael. Thank you. And thanks everybody for watching. Hope you found it valuable. If you have any questions, again, reach out to us. And while you're here, don't forget to like, comment, and share, and hit that subscribe button. And we'll see you again soon.